Analyzing data is like cooking. You pick your data sets, your ingredients, you clean them, you slice them, and then you serve your results. I'm Felipe Hoffa, and in this video, I'm going to travel to Dresden, Germany, to meet the team fighting spam at Lovu. Lovu is an online dating app, and their engineers use data to identify and block spammers trying to abuse their system. In this episode, we're going to learn how they define features to train a logistic regression model to find who's a spammer. And now they can do all of this inside BigQuery. And because we love food, we're going to do all this while cooking. Here we have Juan de Dios Santos, one of the big data engineers fighting spam for Lobu. Exactly so. Hi everyone, my name is Juan, and I'm one of the anti-spammers here at Lobu. And my role here is to design and to develop new techniques and algorithms to detect the spammers from our platform and to avoid the proliferation of them. So today, since we're going to be talking about spam, I thought that the most ideal thing would be to cook something with spam. So I'm going to be preparing one typical dish from my country, Puerto Rico, which is called spam guisada, or just simply jamonilla. Oh, I'm getting hungry already. It's really important to know what exactly spammer and normal users are doing, because of course they're going to behave in different ways. For example, spammers, they do normally the same action quite often, and normal users, well, they just act normal. Yeah, and how do you decide what's normal and what's not normal? So the tracer has three different kind of actions. We have what is called the active action, which are the thing the user is doing. For example, I like you, I send you one message. And yeah. then we also have the passive actions, which are the thing that you are doing upon me, you are sending me one message, you are liking me. And then we have the time, which is the, how much time it has been between each different action. You have your whole system processing images, processing events, and you're also using BigQuery. I would love to know how you use BigQuery, so BigQuery. for this. We use BigQuery mm -hmm. mostly for storing our data, you know, for storing our historical data, prediction data, training set, and so on. However, recently we started to use BigQuery to do machine learning on it. Can you show me what are your tables? How do you do machine learning inside BigQuery? All right, let's get on it. So first here we have our data set. Mm -hmm. And inside our data set, we have one small group of tables, which are called the sample tables. And in these sample tables, I'm going to keep just that, just small, sample, tiny versions of our big data set. So here, let's take a look at what I call the Sheriff. Sheriff is one of our machine learning models. And this one is going to predict if you are a spammer or not based on the thing that you're doing and some of the characteristics of your profiles. And here we have two data sets. We have the training one and the testing one. The training one, of course, is for training the system, and the testing one is for testing it. Uh, and in the training data set, you have all of your columns. Yeah, right? and here each column represents our features. And unfortunately, I need to hide some of them, so that's why you only see numbers. But however, we can focus on the one called message sent, liked, and like created. And this is saying just that. These are the messages that I sent to you, these are the likes that I have done to others, and the people that have liked me. I see, so this table has like 200,000 rows? What, what each is row? Yeah, like here each row represents one observation, so one user. One user? Yeah. Okay, so for each user you summarize features that... Exactly, so here, so like I said, this data set, this training is actually made of two different things. The, the first one is what are you doing? But we calculate this by looking at the ratio of execution of events. Meaning that uh -huh. of all the events that you have done, what is the percentage of message sent? And in this case, we have one user, our user number five, and we can see that the value is around 39%. Meaning that of all the events the person has done, 39% of them has been message sent. Nice. Got it? Yeah. I got it. And, you're, and you determine these features in like experimenting? Exactly. I mean, you try with this, you try with that, you lose some, you gain some, you know, it's just a matter of experimentation. How do you train this? How do you determine? How do I train this? Well, we have our features, or I mean, the BigQuery feature of how to do machine learning inside BigQuery. And first, we need to go to our query editor, of course, uh -huh. and then we're going to execute our query. And here we have this kind of simple 
uh, query and it's called create or replace. And this is going to do exactly that. It's going to create one model or in case the model already exists, it's going to replace it. Cool. And uh, what, uh, what are your options here? Like My options, so first, the first one, the most important one, mm -hmm. is our model type, which is what kind of model I want to train. In this mm -hmm. case, I want to use logistic regression. Logistic regression that allows you to... To do binary classification, either mm -hmm. zero or one, true or false, spammer or hammer. I see. Yeah. Spammer or hammer? Hammer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, like that's how we call it. <laughs> yeah. And what you, yeah, that's, that's where you say, I want to get, to predict this column, spam. Exactly, the other. The second one is input label columns. And here we specify which is the column that is our target. In this case, going to be spam. And then, you also have some options there? Exactly. Now. So I also have mass iteration, mm -hmm. and this one is set to 50. And this means that my system is going to train for 50 iterations. Normally, in this case, it's no long, that's not necessary because I'm really sure it kind of ends around five or six. However, for the next part, I want to show you how the loss function decreases, and for that, I'm setting us to 50, so we can have more data, so we can see a, a prettier curve. Also for that, we need to set early stop to false, really important. Otherwise, they're just going to stop early. Cool, so let's start training this model. We are getting some results. Exactly. So far, since we use max iteration of 50, we are currently on iteration number 41. And as you can see, it's taking around six to seven seconds to actually for each iteration, so it's quite fast. However, we can realize here that the training loss is not changing much. However, like I said before, I was expecting this. I just mm -hmm. want to have 50 iterations just to see how the loss function looks like, because I just like to visualize things. And how kinda. would you visualize this? Well, let's do it in Data Studio. One of my favorite features, let's say, of BigQuery is that we have this cool button here, really powerful button, which is called Exploring Data Studio. And when you click there, it's going to kind of migrate to take your whole data set and it's going to move it to a new Data Studio window. And here in Data Studio, then we can visualize our data. Cool. So you can just now select from whatever the, uh, the training info for exactly. the model is? Yeah. Yeah. And then we can get this data out into Data Studio. Exactly. And here, this is how it looks. I mean, first we need to move a lot of buttons here and drag and drop. But Sorry. essentially, this is how our... On the y-axis, we have the loss. Yes, like we have the loss. And then on the x-axis, we have the number of iteration. And here, mm -hmm. like expected, once again, in around iteration 5 or 4, the values was already kind of getting to start more stable pretty low and then you get to a minimum of uh, zero point of Yes, like it's zero. really, really low. It's like between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. <laughs> maybe, oh. like, maybe like 0 0.15, 0 0.14. That's pretty good and pretty fast. Oh, 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 by the way, now you get these visualizations automatically inside BigQuery once the training is done. And we can also look at the stats of this model. What yeah, were the this is actually statistics? pretty cool. So you know that to make sure, I mean, if you want to know if the model is either good or not, mm -hmm. then we need to have some metrics. And here we have all the five or six metrics just out of the box. We don't have to calculate anything. And for example, we can see precision, recall, accuracy, F1 score, the log function, I mean the loss function that we just saw, and the area under the curve. And by just looking at this value, I would say that it's pretty good. You know, we have an accuracy of almost 96%. Our F1 score is almost 92, and the area under the curve I wouldn't say it's, it's really excellent, yeah. Oh, I like it. And once you have your whole model trained, mm -hmm. uh, what's behind the model? What's behind the model? So in this case, since we're mm -hmm. using logistic regression, it's basically we have a bunch of things we call the weight, or the coefficient, mm -hmm. which, if I explain quick and easy, logistic regression is basically one huge mathematical equation with mm -hmm. a lot of different values. And these values is, are actually what we're going to learn during training. So at the end of the day, all this fancy thing just transforms into a couple of numbers, you know, like our coefficients and they intercept. And with this equal function, we can get our weights out. It's actually a good question, yes. If mm -hmm. we would like to implement this in production into another system, then we just only need to export all of these values and then we should build the equation ourselves and then just by plugging in the values. Perfect. And then we have our own model. Wow, so this is really great because basically you gave a query, this is my table, these are my labels. Exactly. And just run a logistic regression. Yeah, uh, right. And you got a lot of this just automatically. And that's one way in which Lobuo identifies a spam. 
online dating spam. Now with BigQuery, it's really easy to start iterating the features and the training of your model without leaving the data warehouse. But dinner is not ready until we serve it. How do we know how well the anti-spam team is doing at Lovu? Let's go back to the kitchen. Serving here in this case would be, of course, to serve the model in production. However, more than that, I need to make sure how the model is performing. You know, I want mm -hmm. to know how our results are. Exactly. And how are you doing so far? How are we doing this? So we have some no numbers here. These are from our transparency reports. Mm -hmm. And basically, this is some report that we do where we publish. We make public all these values, you know, so people can have an idea of how our system is performing. And in the third quarter of 2016, our percentage of spam was only 0.3%, meaning that of all our users, we only have 0.3% of them were actually spammers, so it's less than 1%. And the number is quite stable, as we can see here, it's like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and so on. And I guess the number being stable is a huge accomplishment. It's good, you know, because it means that I mean, it's, it's never going to drop to zero, of course. Uh -huh. But it's actually, if the number keeps stable, if the number doesn't grow, it means that we're doing a good job. Or yes. so, I think. The spam, I, I guess the spammers keep finding new ways to exploit yes, the system. Yes, it's actually, it's an eternal fight. You know, uh -huh. like, if I sleep, if I get sloppy or anything, then they will just go go ahead. The, but yes, they are keeping them yeah. on the edge. And another metric that I really like to see is the one that says the time it takes to punish someone. Because, of course, we are real time and we want to get the person now. So, and at the beginning, mm -hmm. again, in the third quarter of 2016, we had around 2.2 hours. After that, the number went down. And then after that, we had a huge drop. So it went, it went from point to, to from 2.1 to 1.1. That's like an hour less. And then suddenly something that happens, you know, like new spammer ways or so on, and then the number increased. And then after that, it's going down, down again. Yeah, that's a huge drop at the end of it is, yeah. how I'm long really it takes. I'm really proud of it, yeah. <laughs> well done with that. Thank you. <laughs> so, as we serve our results in a dashboard and yes. we publish how good you've been doing yes. throughout these years. And this is basically the end of our process. Once that's we right. have everything running, you can visualize it, you can show everyone how well you're doing. And once your dish is ready, you can serve it. Like now. So here you go. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. I can find some spam here, and I'm glad that you taught me how to find the spam. Lately, I'm glad I had this opportunity to talk to you about anti-spam, BigQuery, machine learning, and most importantly, about how we fight our spammers. And that was really cool. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Thanks and to you. And enjoy. So now, Mom. I'll do the same. I had so much fun making this video. Thanks a lot to Lovu, to Juan de Dios, and to you for watching. Should I do more of this? Please leave me a message and let me know. What would you like to cook? Thank you very much. I'm Felipe Hoffa, and remember to subscribe. <laughs>